saying that right now. That is just so wonderful. Wish you were here. And we all can be there if we choose to be there because God has made the way. God has made the way. And that's what I'm, the Lord put this on my heart. That's what I'm going to say today, that the Lord has made a way that we can all have that promise of heaven. We all know about that. In John, it tells us that we can have that way and we know how to get to heaven. Yes, so when people say, well, I hope I get there. Well, you don't have to hope. It's already <laughs> been done. Amen. Amen. It's already there, written down. It's yes. already been done. But somehow, we kind of go away from that. Sometimes when we have circumstances, do you really trust in what God says? Do you really trust? Do you really know yes. that, yes, you are going to go to heaven? Yes, that God is really with you through everything? We're going through some really, really hard times now. The Lord said to, to me, Jean, you got to just go ahead and you yourself and tell other people tell them that time is short yes that they have to quit playing around church amen that Absolutely. it's time yeah. for us not to just say woe is me but to get busy to do something to take action amen i said okay lord i'll tell them what are they supposed to do he said i already told them what they're supposed to do i already told you what you're supposed to do in my word from the first word to right. the last word we are told what we are supposed to do, right. how we are supposed to be. But are we that way? No, not always. We uh, are kind of weak. Are we weak <laughs> or are we strong? Are we cowards or are we courageous? Well, we now not very many people are courageous. Sometimes we kind of lay back a little bit and, right. well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do that. No, you can't do anything. Amen. Right. No one can do anything. That's right. Through the Holy Spirit is the only way that yes. we can go ahead right. and have that right. courage and have that yes. strength and realize that what this word says is true. We have to not just say the right things. Just act like we're doing the right things, right. but we that's have good. to have a heartfelt motive. Amen. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. The way God says. Yes. Amen. Example: Ever since in the very beginning, all through the whole Word of God, there are people that have shown us how to be courageous, how to do these things. Are examples for us to learn. That's right. Take Daniel for instance. Uh, Daniel was a pretty brave guy, you know. Yes, you he know, was. he survived a whole bunch of lions and everything. God will protect us when we do what he wants us to do. Yes. There is no reason why we can't go ahead to anybody, do anything that God says that we need to do. Amen. But we cannot, we cannot say no. Amen. And he'll give us that strength to do yes. it. When Daniel said, uh, oh, yeah, he loved the Lord. He prayed outside of his window and he prayed to God three times a day. And then, of course, the other people, and God was, and, and Daniel was favored by God. Mm -hmm. And so the other people got well, jealous. That's right. When you're favored by God, other people will look at you and they'll be jealous of what you have. Right. right. That's why we get persecuted. That's why people will tell lies about us. That's right. About that's right. Us and, and that's why they don't understand us. Well, how come God is showing them favor and not me? How come that they're protected by things and they look so happy? They don't have nothing to look happy about. But look at them. Where is this joy come from? Right. When Daniel was told, no, that no, he can't pray outside of his window to God the Father, yeah, guess what he did? He prayed even all the louder. Yes, he prayed he even all, yes. all the harder. Amen. When the man sitting... Uh, and, uh, and, and and when Jesus walked by and he needed to have healing and he had to have help and the people said, shh, be quiet. Oh, you know, no. Jesus don't have time for you right now. <laughs> he cried all the harder. Oh, right. yes. It's time for us, church, to cry yes. all the harder. Amen. We have got to be heard. Amen. No, we're not heard. We say that we like to be heard. But if we were heard, we wouldn't be in this mess right now exactly in the situation it, that we're dealing with the government dealing with this dealing with that that's right yes the lord is in control and yes people will tell us 
oh, Jesus is coming back, and, and we can just, just sit back, and he'll take care of everything. I mean, what's to come is to come. You know, we can just, oh, well, yeah. just sit back. Jesus is in control. Yes, he's in control, but he wants his people to do something. That's right. We yeah. can't just let Jesus do everything. Amen. If you stop and you think everything, the blessings that you got, you had to do something to get those blessings. That's if right. you just sat on your bum honey and you didn't pray, you didn't <laughs> obey the Lord, you just right. said, well, God made me. I know he made me. I said that prayer of salvation. I can just sit here and that's it. Let the world go by. Don't do nothing. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. He's Lord of Your my microphone life. went you off. Get a, turn it back on. <laughs> Sorry. You no. won't. Devil. You won't get you won't you won't get a darn thing if you don't if you just sit down there on your lap and you don't do nothing. Right. You know, God wants us to pray. Right. God Amen. wants us to ask us. God right. wants right. us to be here and say, Well, I'm a Christian and I go to church and I know God's in control of all this. So even though we're going maybe through the last days, I can just sit there because God's got it. I mean if he's in control, this is what's gonna happen. No, God has a purpose for yes, us to do every single day that we live. Yes. Okay. Uh, so in Revelation one three, it said, "Blessed are blessed are those who read and hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written, for the time is at hand." The time is at yeah. hand. Yeah. We may yeah. not have tomorrow. We may not have this afternoon. Don't you realize that because Russia's going ahead in Ukraine right now, we're going to be probably next. This is yeah. just the beginning. You know, one day we're going to be in that same situation. Yeah. Are you going to be a coward or are you going to be courageous? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do for the Lord? What are you going to do to try to make people accept him and to yeah. say help to save lives through the Holy Spirit by letting yes. them know about our Lord. Amen. Okay. Jesus has some things that he wants his church to know in these last days. God is so wonderful, again from the word, he warns his people, he protects his people, he saves his people, he wants to guide them and lead them. Ever, ever since even in the Old Testament, he guided the people you know, uh, by Moses, and they were doing their own thing. You know, they didn't listen. They thought they were all big now. They got out of Egypt. That's and right. The Red sea parted, and everything was all well. And so never mind about any more needing to have anything about God. Yep. But God still is in control, and he yes, wants he his people to obey and do yes. things for him. Yes. Uh, so uh, in the last days... God wants to show us what's happening. We do not know when the last day will be. We no. do not know when Jesus is coming back. No one knows when Jesus is coming back, not right. even him. But we know of what time it is, how close it is, how we should act and be. Yes. Don't Amen. you know, it's just like, um, just like I was saying in Bible uh, Sunday school today, in Bible class, is it just like, the prodigal son, just like a father with the son, with his children, you with your children. You want to warn them of danger. You want to show them and tell them things. That's right. Because of that love that you have for them. Yes. God the Father has the same love for us, just yes. that same way. Because yeah. after all, he gave his own son for us. Amen. So don't you think that he is going to warn us and show us and tell us? We yeah. may not know, like I said, the exact yeah. moment, but we know, we can yeah, see we can when see things them. are starting to change, things are starting to happen. Yes. And he knows in his word what kind of people his church is supposed to be. Yeah. Wow. In fact, he even wrote it down. He, he had John on the Isle of Patmos write all these things down when John saw the vision. What God, Jesus himself said, that this is what my church, my church, he wrote about the churches. This is what my churches are. But he said, yeah, they're good, but I have ought. I have some ought with each and every one of yes. them. Just, and the same thing goes for this church. I'm getting out where the road, where rubber meets the road here. Yeah. There, you know, God is pleased with this church, but he has somewhat an ought about it. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect. 
No. We have to still strive to get that way. We won't be perfect until we see, we see Jesus. So I want to talk to you about in Revelation exactly. Uh, Revelation is Revelation verse 1, uh, which I read before. And now we're going to talk about some things that he wants this church to know about. Like he wants every church to know about. So let's examine our hearts and see if these words are speaking to you. I'm only here to give this message. The Holy Spirit is in each and every one of you when you are believers. And the Holy Spirit, if you listen, he will tell you. Oh, yeah. Yes, sometimes you do these things, never do these things, or maybe no, you, you never do them, yes you do them, or maybe only sometimes. So when we go through these little qualities, ask yourself, and when I say church, it's each individual. We are a group, a body, a gathering, but you are the church. Right. And God said you individually are the church. That's right. So the first church that uh, John had, 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 had witnessed and seen in the vision was a church that lost their first love. Mm -hmm. Lost their first love. Do you remember when maybe you had your first girlfriend or boyfriend? Do you remember how you acted, how you felt? Okay. Remember when you first got saved? And you remember how you felt? How grateful, how humbling you were, how excited you were. I remember I thought I could walk on water almost. <laughs> That's how I met my husband. I had got really, uh, well, I got saved for a while and then left and backslid and got saved. So when, this, when getting saved really took and I really was serious with the Lord, is when I went through this experience of, yeah, I can do anything. I can touch you, and through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, you will be you will be healed. I thought I could do everything. So I uh, met my husband about three weeks uh, after I got saved in the church. And so anyway, uh, he had just come out of prison, and uh, he was working, and I was his boss, and so I had an upper hand on that. And at work, he was up in the ladder and uh, doing some light work. And I, I didn't really, I mean, we didn't have any attraction. He had gray cowboy boots that I liked, and that was the only attraction that I liked. Anyway, the Lord told me, go ahead and talk to him. Go talk to him. Because he was real, he was real kind of bitter. He was real... Uh, kind of kept to himself and he was just there to do his job and you could tell he was miserable. He was a, a bitter looking person. And uh, and so you can tell when people have the joy in the Lord or when they're pretending to have the joy in the Lord or when they don't have the joy in the Lord. You all, you know, can tell. Yeah. You can tell. And so anyway, he was up there fixing this little light bulb or something and I was on the ladder and I was down here and I said to him, I said, uh, uh, Daryl, excuse me. I said, uh, I, I need to talk to you about something. I said, um, you need to know, you need to know this person that I know. And he just looked at me and I said, you, you need to have a friend. And he thought I was hitting on him. <laughs> and I wasn't. Anyway, he said, I, and so not then. So anyway, so I said, you need to know a friend. Well, I don't need any friends. I said, you need to have this friend. I said, you need to have Jesus. He kept on doing this and fixing the light, ignoring me. I said, you hear what I said? I said, you need to have Jesus. He said, look down on me. Who do you think you are, Billy Graham? And that's the only that's the only person he thought he knew in the in that was religious of us it was Billy Graham. And I said, No, I'm not Billy Graham. All I know is that I know that you're sad and that you need to know about my friend Jesus. And so he just kept on. He couldn't argue with me because, like I said, I was his boss. <laughs> so anyway, every day I kept on and on and on talking a little bit about about the Lord and and uh, then we got to be friends and of course the rest is history we got married but everybody needs to to know the lord and you have to have that feeling that you can tell everybody 
Now, I know I'm not the only one that felt that way. So just for a second, think about what it was like when you first came to the Lord. Yes. And the Lord just took you out of that miry pit and brought you closer to his arms. What did it feel like? Yes. Remember that excitement? Amen. Oh, yeah. Remember that zealous, that zeal? <clears throat> okay, well, what happened to it? Wow. What happened to it? I still you got take it. take it for granted. It's like being maybe in some marriages, which, oh, I hope not. The Lord's not pleased with this either. Maybe after you've been married about 40 years, you take that person for granted. You're not all excited, you know, when they walk through the door. You know what I mean? Or you don't, oh, this is my very favorite one. When your husband goes to work. And, and he comes home, and you don't have any supper made for him. Oh. Or you're still all <laughs> don't make up on, your hair in rollers or something, y'all raggy old slippers on, mm -hmm. no makeup on. And when you first got married, you know how you looked. You maybe even had supper in your lingerie. I don't know. Anyway, you were acting a whole lot different than I do know, because we are all human. Well, right. the same thing. The Lord doesn't want us to change. We still want that love, that love right. that is yes. Amen. for Him. First okay, love. Don't get complacent. No. That is the intellectual word that I'm trying to talk about, complacency. Yes. Don't get complacent and take the Lord for granted. Right. But I, you know what I mean. I mean, you still wear your makeup on and get your dress clothes on and everything else when you're in the presence of the Lord, per se. In other words, you give him your very best. Yeah, yes. Your very best love like yeah. you did when you first met him. Amen. Okay? When you first were, had that zeal and that excitement. Amen. So Jesus was displeased with this. I mean, the church, it, it was a good church. But they forgot about that first love. Right. Yeah. So ask yourself, did you forget maybe a little bit about your first love? Are you all excited about telling somebody about Jesus and what he did for you? Yes. Or did you forget about that and say, oh, well, if they can learn that in their other church or somebody else could tell them I'm too busy. Do they see that first love in you, that zeal? When, when you talk about Jesus, do you get all excited? Do you get kind of, woo, you know, like, hallelujah, yes. Brother Tim. God love your heart. Yes. Amen, yes. yes. Hallelujah, Brother Tim. Or when you see Brother Norris with a tear coming down his eye when he speaks about oh, Jesus. Amen. Where did that excitement go? Yes, thank okay, you, he Jesus. He had that with him. Where did that excitement go? So does that happen to you? Are you in that position? Do you never get excited about the Lord? Or maybe just sometimes? Or are you always what they would call a Jesus freak in this day and age? Okay? <laughs> yeah, some kind of radical nut. Yeah. Well, some people get radical over stupid things, but get radical over the person that mm -hmm. gave his whole life for us. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be radical about. Yes, yes. a Bible thumper. Be a radical, not crazy church for the Lord. Yeah, right. And people ought to see that. Amen. And people should feel that that's when they right. come in. This that's is right. a strange place. This is a place that really loves the Lord. Amen. We're not so just everything proper and a plan and a schedule, but we tell it like it is. Yes. Amen. We tell about the love that Jesus had for each and every one of us. And we all yes. admit that we were once yes. dirty rags and and we were sinners, and we did these things, and God had still loved us when we, we were yet still in sin. But we love him right now. So that's about the first church. So we know now, what should we do? What should we do in these last days? Yes. Be more zealous for the Lord. Yes, amen. Do things, be excited about it. To have that courage to let others see that. Yes. The second church, it said, they were followers deceiving themselves. Ooh, -wee. they remained faithful always. They were good church. They remained faithful. Good person remained faithful. But they were deceiving themselves. They were the kind of church, kind of people that, yes, again, uh, I'm saved, and I read my word, and things like that. But the little lady down the street that doesn't have hardly anything to eat, well, 
Medicare will take care of her. Somebody else will take care of her. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm a good Christian. I'm faithful to you, Lord. But how do you treat other people? That's right. Well, if you think of those little things, what about if you're able to cut somebody's grass? Oh, no, I'm not going to use my lawnmower. I'll have that thing wrecked up, and I don't uh, know. And if, especially <laughs> the gas prices today, and then the time. And you want me to go over there and help that elderly couple to clean, to, uh, clean their yard and cut their grass for nothing? For nothing? I can't do that. I don't have time to do that. Okay? So you deceive yourself when you think you're so pious. And you sit down and I'm just so good. Or you have a really good meal to eat and somebody may not have any. Right. Amen. You know, or you see a, a young family struggling. Yes. And uh, you, yes. Have, you have plenty or even a little bit. Or even if you didn't have plenty. The Lord says he will provide. Right. We can all yes. share with one another. Yes. So that's what the Lord had, Jesus had with that, that church. They were deceiving themselves. Maybe they loved Jesus, but they had ought against someone. Maybe they would backbite. Maybe they were a gossip. Maybe they didn't forgive. So examine your heart. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you just yes, touch everyone Jesus. and examine their hearts and shine the light the great big old flashlight in inside your heart and let us see father yes, yes we lord all are weak where we all need improvement this yes, is the last Jesus. days yes. folks we cannot yes, waste lord. a day Jesus of time name. talk about lights i <laughs> i'm so crazy i once <laughs> had a little thing in my mind that you know i kept reading in the word that jesus was the light and i wonder light what kind of a light what kind of wattage was he okay are you are you a 25 watt light for the lord or are you a floodlight or, or maybe you're just one of these lights that go on and off on and off yeah. okay? <laughs> or maybe you're a hundred watt watt light for the lord where are you or maybe you're just a little teeny old flashlight only when maybe you're needed are you ever a light for the lord what kind of a light are you? Amen. Okay, what kind that's of a good. Light are you? So that examine your heart there. Uh, then the third church. He had no the other church he talked about. There were seven of them at this time. Uh, the best one was the Church of Philadelphia, though. Yeah. I'll get to that yeah. later. But the third, the third church, uh, tolerate people in church. They tolerated people in church. So when people came in, or even the uh, people in the congregation. They tolerated people, okay? Uh, they tolerated people, the Lord says in the word verbatim, who are like the devil. What? They're in this church and they're like the devil? And, to, and we just tolerate it? What in the world does that mean, dear Lord? It says be honest with who you are really. Be honest with who you yes. are. Yes. Okay? Do we tolerate compromise? Because they're our friends. Well, I know that sister so and so shouldn't shouldn't be watching that show, and she shouldn't be really talking to other people about somebody's business. And I know that, but she's my friend, and we're all not perfect. And it because well, I know that that brother. Paul, which we don't have a brother Paul, <laughs> brother Paul, he cheated on his taxes, but you know, he really, the government's no good anyway, and it's okay to kind of cheat on stuff once in a while, oh, and then, God. and then we have Sister uh, Lorraine, we don't have a Sister Lorraine, <laughs> Sister Lorraine, <laughs> that uh, she kind of, um, uh, Tells little lies. You can't uh -oh. believe a word she says. Uh -oh. I mean, she's in the church, but we tolerate that. So you can excuse her. You can excuse her because she's our friend. She goes to this church. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Oh, yeah. And I know about 
sister so-and-so. Now, she's kind of having some hanky-panky with her neighbor, you know. So, but that's okay. Oh, goodness that's okay, though. She's still a good tither, and she comes to church, and she sings in the choir. So, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll excuse that. And she's my friend. She's got the neatest clothes, and we share them. So, you know, we'll excuse that. So, be so honest true. about who you really are. So right. there was a church that That's tolerated right. people mm -hmm. like this. So we have to, yep. in love, in love, hold each other accountable. When you right. see a friend, it's supposed to be a friend, when you see someone that has it going in error against what the Lord would want, because that's going to, if you really are a friend, and, you, and you're a member of this church body. If you see somebody going down the wrong path in kindness and love, you should share that. Tell them. Tell them in the Word. Yes. Say, sister or brother, I love you with all my heart, but we have to hold each other accountable. I do things that are wrong. We all do things that are wrong and maybe in error. And we don't know because the enemy is out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy That's right. all of us. That's true. And he can just sneak in a little teeny way. Yes. And others who are praying for us, who love us, can maybe see that. So it's up to us to go ahead and hold each other accountable. Right. Well, this church didn't do that. And that's what Jesus said. You tolerate everybody. You tolerate everybody. For example, I know myself, we had a church, and uh, my husband and I, and we had this lady who, she we knew she was a gossip. We knew that she, you know, did things. But the church is for people that need to have help. No one is perfect. So we tolerated her. But then she was starting to cause strife in the church. Well, my husband, being a sweet, kind man that he is, and being a young pastor, didn't know how to handle that. And so what we did, we let this woman stay in the church, cause a whole bunch of mischief, trouble.